Hello everyone, this is Jared Miller, it's coming at you today, kind of going to go over the uh, the corkscrew and just a couple of different variations and kind of uh, also kind of how to do a little bit of beat counting as for some people I was kind of talking with. So um, basically where I learned the corkscrew was actually from uh, from Ploy, um, but it's this, this basic one over here and again there's all sorts of variations and I'll try to cover quite a few of the ones that I've played with. Um, but basically, uh, the first thing I want to kind of touch on is the corkscrew and that one being a two beat and kind of where you get the beat count from. So there's a couple of different ways that you can look at it and break it down and make it easier in your head. Um, but basically, you're counting halves of the move. So similar uh, to the three beat where you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, for that whole thing, you're basically counting each half of the move. And so this one is a two beat because there's two on the top and two on the bottom. And you can break that apart with either both nunchucks or singularly. So um, so to kind of show you, you have one, two, one, two at the bottom, if you can see that. So there's one, two, and at the bottom, one, two, as it follows. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The other way that you can break it down, which I think is a little simpler sometimes, especially when you start getting into higher count moves, um, is to just do the individual stick. So now if you, if you look at it when you're doing this, um, you're basically, if you cut one out, you're just doing this. So there's one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's how you kind of count how many beats of a move is. So even though there's technically four different individual parts, um, for whatever odd reason, when the terminology was being written, so to speak, they just decided it as each half um, is the move. So you have one and two, and then one and two, put them together, it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, that sort of thing. So um, that's kind of how you get it. So. Um, and same thing there, if you do your, your three beat weaves with one hand, how you can how you have your over under portions, so you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's how you become the three beat weave pattern, even though you're technically doing six parts. So you have your one, two, three, one, two, three, and of course I'm just counting my right hand on that one. But so that's how it kind of comes into play, and that's how you'll you'll count basically all of these weaving, chasing sort of patterns when it comes to the beat style moves. Um, now I was going to kind of show uh, what I've kind of worked out in my head is a three beat, um, and then there's kind of like a three beat alternating that you can kind of do, which is kind of a cool move. Um, but basically, the three beat corkscrew looks something like this. So you have your two beat, and then you add a beat right there in the middle. So you're kind of opening up this hole right here in between your arms. You see that, that gap kind of right here where my uh, nunchucks are spinning right there? That's kind of the gap that you're creating, which actually, if you also think about it, another similar poi move, which transfers the nunchucks, of course, is the buzzsaw. When you're doing that one, it's the same thing, but you're just doing a horizontal buzzsaw in the plane or in the, in the hole between your, between your arms, just like this. Okay, so, so again, you're going to start here, and then it goes into that pinwheel opening. And so it kind of ends up being with, the, with depending on which direction you're going, it ends up being that one stick does two on the top, one on the bottom, and the other one kind of does, as it comes over, it's already in the bottom. So it's one, two, down, one, two, down, like that. See so yeah, there's down and then down again. Um, and so that's kind of cool because once you get comfortable with it, um, you can kind of change the pattern. So if you want to do your twos into three, into two, three, into two. And it just flows really easily once you kind of get comfortable with it. Now the other fun one is when you learn the other direction of it, it comes, becomes the alternating sort of three beat corkscrew. So you, when you get this part down, and you actually flick it to the reverse side, so you can kind of start doing these really fun sort of alternating patterns. And you're still getting all the beads as you would on top and bottom, but instead of doing just straight back, you're just alternating the mid piece again. Um, and so that's kind of where I've kind of worked it out is the three beads. So I know it's kind of hard to explain it all throw in a little bit of slow-mo so you can kind of see it um, and with the two-beat as well. Um, and it's still kind of goofy in my head because how there's the two, the one at the top, the one in the middle, and then the one down below. And then you have the one that swings with your other hand, swings over here and then down. 
So it's almost like one at the top, two at the bottom, and this one's one at the top, or two at the top and one at the bottom. So yeah, one at the top, two at the bottom, two at the top, one at the bottom. And that switch is basically for every way you, when you're alternating. So again, I know uh, my explanation here is a little bit kind of all over the place and, and wonky. Like I said, I'm still kind of figuring out the beat count for that one in myself or in my own head. I've never really sat down and tried to measure it. I've just felt it out. Um, but that's the best way I can describe it is because you have the two and then the one and then the one and then the two. You have three beats on each hand. So technically it's a three beat again, even though there's six and then you have your alternating. So you have your one, or sorry, your, your two and then your three and then you're alternating three. So you still have the top and the bottom, but you're just spinning freely in and out of them. Kind of like not uh, giving a pause or a break in between. And again, you can just pause it right there, spin it around, you know your spot, trend, trend is just there. Do an anti-spin version of it, which totally just threw off my plays there, whoa! Um, so that's basically that. Um, now, the other kind of cool thing is once you kind of start getting that this motion down, if you've ever seen this one here, that's the exact same thing you're just doing it here. So if you ever have problems with this move, um, that's actually one way that I that I learned that one was to, and it's and it feels very weird. And I recommend some softer chucks than the wood ones and the kind of hard plastic ones I have here. But is once you get here, if you can kind of get wide ones, you stick your head in it and then slowly work your way towards standing up. And that will take time to do it as fluidly as I just kind of did it there. Um, at first, you'll probably want to smack yourself in the head or the face, it's just kind of natural curve a bit. But to me, that was one thing that hugely unlocked um, being able to do that move, which kind of allows for some fun. Sort of, sort of playful moves there, so, so again, you're starting with this move, the 2B quartz screw. You just stick your head down, again, just be very careful. And as you can see, I'm still on the same plane. I've just got my head like in the middle. Now, if you look very closely at the center of the chucks, where they kind of want to touch in the middle, right here, and it's almost like you're drawing like a like an infinity symbol or like a like a hourglass sort of symbol across it. So you're putting your head right in the middle where the chucks aren't spinning, so as not to get yourself, you know, hit in the face. And then you slowly just stand up with your chokes. And this works the same thing with Poi too. This will help you get that move uh, down very well. And uh, I just like the way it transitions. So, um, but again, I just wanted to kind of share uh, my kind of ideas and insights. And sorry again, that's uh, my explanation on the kind of upper beat moves is a little bit all over the place, but I think you kind of get what I'm saying here. So. Um, real quick, I'll throw in some slow-mo so that way you guys can kind of just look at it from a different perspective and kind of study it, um, and hopefully that'll help. And uh, by all means, if you have any problems, issues, questions, feel free to get at me. Thanks.